Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing better than me. Let's get the mic sorted, shall we? We're back here again. There we go. The mic's sorted. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. Leeds United are through. Yes, everybody. Unbelievably, Leeds are through and we've won away. Uh, we've won away in the FA Cup, in the fruit salad kit, and we've not been beaten at a sort of with all, the, with all the respect in the world, a bit of a tin pot lower league side, which seems to be something that Leeds have struggled with over years and years and years. I mean, I saw some Peterborough fans speaking about the game at the start and saying, look, Leeds lose these games. Leeds lose these types of games. And um, they, they weren't wrong. Leeds do lose these types of games. And, and we're all looking at it and we're thinking, you know, do we... Do we assess this game in a way where it's like confidence and 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 momentum and consistency? And I think you do. I think you've got to do it. Leeds put out a very very strong team there today, and I expected this. You know, I expected a, a dominant performance against the Birmingham side who won two two games in fifteen, and with a Wayne Rooney sort of strategy, which was just nothing short of terrible. I expected that, and I expected Leeds to go to Peterborough today, to go to London Stadium, and to dominate. You know, you have to expect these things as a fan. You shouldn't be surprised by these things when you have got a good team, and that's almost a mixed second slash first team as well. Um, you know, you need to be going out there and getting the job done. This is a lower league side who, in phases, did cause Leeds a few problems. You know, their wingers up against Furpo and up against Shackleton. I thought it was a 50-50 duel, 50-50 ground duel between Shackleton and uh, their winger on one side, I think it was Mason Clark, and the winger on the other side, it was getting tight to Furpo, beat him a couple of times. Um, I think it was Poku, wasn't it? Poku and Mason Clark on either side gave Leeds a few troubles, and you could see that's what Peterborough were targeting. Now, more interesting that Peterborough targeted that. That was a game plan to go at Leeds United's uh, fullbacks, and that's because that is an area of Leeds United's weakness. Shout out to those people who don't think we need to invest in fullbacks, which obviously we do. But overall, Leeds were well worth that win. Well worth. I thought dominant in phases. I thought Peter Brad had a couple of good opportunities. At 1-0 up, they had that opportunity, which somehow scuffled wide and, um, yeah, just, just went past the post. I thought it was in. Everyone on the watch along thought it was in. But in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game, Leeds were dominant, completely dominant. Um, I, I sort of slated Patrick Bamford a little bit on the watch along for us not going 1-0 up. Uh, with 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 Pat Bamford and and I did think to be honest with you he should have scored inside about five ten minutes when he had that header on the six yard box on the penalty spot that should have gone in and then when you're seeing what he can do for his second goal which we'll get into in just a little bit you're stunned that that first one didn't go in William Yonso went down for a, a penalty yeah cheers Cloud Dizzle uh, went down for a penalty um, didn't he uh, now oh, I don't think and I still don't think. That was a penalty. I, I don't think it was a penalty. Um, Willie Nonto couldn't believe it. I mean, he did bring his leg towards Nonto. Nonto, I felt, stepped in front of his leg a little bit and went over. I, I, I don't think that was a penalty. I think if that was given against us, I'd be fuming. So that's how, that's how I think it from an unbiased perspective, taking those white tinted glasses off. I, I try to look at it from from an unbiased perspective, and I think I'd be I'd be raging if that was given against us. So um, yeah, I didn't think it was. To be honest, I thought it'd have been really soft. But I can all see the other side of it. Was contact made? Well, there was contact, but did but did Willie enforce the contact? Did he move his leg and his foot towards the defender's leg? I thought he did. But some of you guys may see may uh, think 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 differently on that one. Um, Ethan Ampadu got his goal, didn't he? The ball played in uh, set piece, two set piece goals, which was great. Uh, ball played in from Anthony. Everybody just stopped. Everyone stopped. So, was it offside? Was it was it not offside? Nobody moved. Bamford chested it to try and take it down for himself. <laughs> Awful touch. Um, and went straight into Ampadu's path. A, a, a hint of offside, maybe. Maybe VAR would have taken a look at it in the Prem. But uh, in the Prem, in the, you know, obviously, but we're not there, are we? So we don't need to go on about that. We were there and we had to look at VAR every, every time we scored. But listen, um, it was it was a goal, a good finish from Ampadu. Swiped it with his left, went past the keeper, won the lead. non to incident happened, obviously. And um, yeah, I mean, you're looking around and you're thinking, I thought for about 15, 20 minutes, um, 15, 20 minutes, Leeds were a little bit poor after that, a little bit, well, we do what we normally do, which is give teams sort of the opportunity to get back into the game. And we've done that frequently this season. The ante wasn't up truly. Really. Leeds didn't go and, 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 and aggressively go for that second. We, we stepped back a little bit. We went five yards back and enabled Peterborough to get a feel of the ball, get into the game a little bit, which I thought was a little bit disappointing. But 
overall, um, we came into it and we've got to talk about it. Obviously, Farker didn't make any changes at half time. But listen, do I do I think Pat Bamford is B9? Do I think Bam Bam is now the answer going forward? I do not. Do I think he's good enough? No, I do not. But what he has shown is that he's still got it in the locker. He's still got elements of quality. That goal was nothing short of world class. That is a world class goal. And what I loved about it is, and I said this on the watch along, um, we went route one. We bypassed the press, which when you get in Bamford, what we've seen with Birmingham, what we've seen with Peterborough today is the system changes for Leeds is the most interesting thing. Leeds go above the press right? Which is what I've called for now for two months. What can we do differently, Connor? Don't play Perot and Rutter because we can't enact any sort of bypass of the press because we won't go over the top. Now we're starting to see Leeds go above the midfield congestion, the midfield mid-block. We've started to see that now. It's a different way where Leeds United can play stylistically. It's not just through the pitch, it was turning very Jesse Marsh-esque, wasn't it? Everything was played through the middle. We're actually going above and beyond. That's exactly what I believe it was Joe Rodon did. Played the ball to Bamford. And it, a, a beautiful chest, which he struggled with on the first goal, even though it'll go down as a Bamford assist. And um, an absolutely stunning volley. A stunning, stunning, stunning volley, which ended up in the top corner and was, was nothing short of... It was a world-class finish. A world-class finish. Um, and you can't get around that. And uh, listen, he's still got it in his locker. But <clears throat> I'm not getting too, you know, I'm not getting drawn away with all this. We, we will see fans online saying now that he is the answer. But I think systematically is the way you've got to look at Pat Bamford. What does he bring to this Leeds United side, which is different from Yoel Perot and which is different from Jorginho Rutter? Bamford is on a regular game-by-game basis is probably a three to five out of 10 in terms of quality. We all know that. Let's not rewrite history. But as I've mentioned before, stylistically, tactically, strategically, he gives us something completely different to what you have when it's Rutter and Perot. Now, what you turn around and say then is, well, why did we go and buy your Perot? That is a very good question. Why did we spend 16 million on your pro? That is another very, very good question because Leeds aren't able to play with an out and out number nine with your pro in the team. We've seen that. We've seen that with Rutter plays the number nine when Perot's in the team. You know? So, and you've seen it consistently with Perot and Rutter when it comes to Bamford. I think Perot is better with Bamford ahead of him, which says he's a number 10. He's he's, he's still so far apart from Pat Bamford today. Bamford's always on the last line of the defence, always between the centre-backs, always off the shoulder of the centre-back. You saw Knight constantly doing this over his left shoulder, looking for Bamford. They don't need to do that with Perot. So all you guys who are still convinced that Yoel Perot is a number nine, why every single time when we go forward is he still five to, five to eight yards behind Pat Bamford? in terms of Leeds progressing through those transitions, because he's not a number nine. Never has been, never is a number nine. Isn't. You know, we can talk about it all we want in terms of, we want him to be a nine, he's not. Hence why he's playing behind Pat Bamford in an FA Cup game against the League One side. So that's what we've learned about Bamford. He's made, I think Rutter looks better when Bamford's on the pitch. The problem is, Rutter looks better when Bamford's on the pitch. Perot looks better, in my opinion, when Bamford's on the pitch, because then you've got two... Proper 9.5 slash 10s in behind your actual number nine. Um, Perot uh, doesn't play as a nine because Farker is wrong. It's not true, Jason. It's not. It's just not, It's just not true. <laughs> it's just not true. Uh, sorry. Um, and Stephen, you're here, aren't you? You're here. Thanks for the view, mate. Good boy. Thanks, mate. Good boy. Um, let's have a look at some of your comments. So Giles in the building. Agree 100%. Uh, Bamford, not the answer. We got to admire that goal, goal of the season. Yeah, cheers. And guys, memberships are available in the section below. You just press join for two pound a month. You can you get special perks on the channel as well. Patreon is open for around about four pound sixteen a month. You get three podcasts a week and you play ratings. Well, we'll be going. We'll we'll be going there next. And um, yeah, make sure you check that out. Perot bench now. Then that's what we're talking about, uh, Jack. I think um, that's where that's where I, you're looking now. You are looking, and and um, yeah, I, I think so. I think as of right now, um, I think Cardiff, you've got to play Bamford. I think he scored two goals in two. I don't think he's the second coming of Christ, but at the same time, he's given us a different way of playing. And you guys can dislike that all you want. Listen, I'm not Bamford's biggest fan, but should we have gone out and got a proper number nine in the summer? Yes, we didn't. 
Uh, we'll be getting on to Carvalho very, very soon. MW, shout out to you. Perot wasn't a nine at Swansea either. People seem to think he's this penalty box number nine. He wasn't. Half the goals aren't striker. They, they, they bend you spot on. But listen, you can't... People will just come in here and say he's a number nine, number nine, number nine. I don't know where they're getting this from. I don't know where they're getting this from. But it is what it is. Um, but yeah, it's very, very strange. I know, mate. But... um. But overall, I uh, was impressed with Archie in the midfield. Really impressed with Archie in the midfield. Can we now see Archie Gray actually competing with Kamara and um, Ampadu in the midfield? What you saw with Archie Gray this for, this this uh, game was him taking shots on goal, was him playing in a number eight role, was him playing almost higher up, which we've seen Kamara do, but you don't see Kamara shoot. Kamara doesn't shoot. I think sometimes, I, I really like the silky smooth operator, but I think a lot of the time he looks for the easy pass, which the easy pass at the minute is sideways. I don't think he goes forward. I don't think he infiltrates that back line as much as Archie does. Archie will get a shot off. Archie will play the ball in between the channels, try to look for those killer passes. I think Kamara is very much, when I'm watching him week in, week out, I think he is a very much a double pivot player. And what I mean by that is in terms of him just sitting back, but you can't do that when you've got Ampadu in the team. Because Ampadu is the rear guard of that midfield, uh, almost an extra defender. So for me... Um, it's great to see Archie there. I want to see Archie there more often. And that is why there is so much impetus on Leeds getting another right back. They've got to get a right back. They've got to get a left back. They've got to get a left back. And potentially, from what we're seeing, which we are going to speak about in another in another stream, potentially they are looking at central attacking midfielder now, which is so interesting because that would, in my opinion, look at Leeds dropping Perot and, and him just getting back in sparingly, which which is interesting. Uh, thoughts on Gruev today, uh, it says uh, Joel, um, thought he was under the radar and tidy. Yeah, I always think he is, Joel. I think he is tidy. I just think he's a bit safe sometimes, mate. I think he's just a little bit safe. Uh, Michael Keane says, I love the Archie Gray midfield today. I thought he was very, very good. Yeah, I agree, mate. I did think he was good. Archie just gets stepping into that midfield. He's better in midfield. He's better in midfield because he can he can express himself a little bit more and he can get forward. And it's not all about looking at the wingers in the championship, which are a very good standard. So, yeah. Uh, Firpo was an interesting one. Once again, uh, he's 50-50, isn't he? I mean, even at League One, um, I mentioned this at the start of the stream, but League One um, standard, even getting at him, beating him. But I did think he did okay today, you know, but I'm not judging Junior Firpo. Listen, if he gives us 10 games at left back and his performances are 7 out of 10 and above all the time, fantastic. That's where we can judge him. If he's going to give us three games, get injured, come back, be rusty, be poor, then be okay for two games, then it's just a pattern that is junior Firpo. So we need to see him be in the team for a long period of time and actually put in proper, proper performances week in, week out. Still, against Bir I'm not judging him against Birmingham. You can't judge him against Birmingham. Birmingham were nothing short of a pub team when they came to Leeds United. Peterborough showed more than Birmingham did. Um, and today, I thought he was very 50-50 with the defender. The defender got the better of him. Firpo got the better of him as well. So I thought, you know, we all know this, but he's a left wing back. He's not a left back. Um, and I think maybe in some situations, some situations, Daniel Farker would prefer a left back. Um... What was Pro doing differently at Swansea to be netting so many goals before we bought him? What he was doing, Sujal, is he was... They played a 3-4-2-1, I believe it was. 3-4-2-1. They'd have him and Patterson just behind Oberfemi. So he's in a number 10 role. He's always been in a number 10 role. So they'd complement each other well. And basically, what... um what Russell Martin would do is just give them the freedom. He'd give them the freedom and just say, you guys go as almost a three. But they'd interchange, they'd be fluid between each other and he would be a number 10. I think Pro would be decent as a number 10. But is he as good as Rutter as a number 10? No. Rutter's just, I mean, he's he's just unpredictable, isn't he? But look at the chances created. You can't keep Rutter out of this side. And if you put in Bamford in at the number nine, you've got to drop one of them or you've got to change up your system, which we know Daniel Farker will not change up his system. So you could get Pro in the team, but Farker won't change up his system, as we know. So, <laughs> yeah. Bam is the, Bamford is the bomb, says a lot of people. Uh, Demar, uh, sorry, Domston says, uh, would could you see uh, Bamford, Rutter and Perot starting for us? No, mate, I think it's two out of the three. Two out of the three for me. But yeah, Gruev, Gruev was class, but yeah, I don't think he should be over Kamara. But there is... I hope all, all you supporters who gave all the hate and abuse to Patrick Bamford ready to eat on but Jill, Jill. Oh, dear. Listen, 
one of my best mates, Brownie, is going to be giving me this as well. So listen, um, I didn't give abuse to Patrick Ramford. I don't condone abuse. But saying he's not good enough, I will still say that. But he is a number nine. And he gives Leeds something different strategically to play with. Um, so I don't mind him there at all. It gives Leeds another option. Um, route one, which I think helps. But some really good nod-ons. Listen, if he can elevate his game at the age of 30, then fair play to the lad. But normally on trans patterns and data, you don't see that. But I'd love to see him, you know, if he can score bloody 15 goals a season and do that, then that's fantastic. Brilliant. But I don't think he'll be able to do it. I need more than Peterborough and Birmingham to uh, convince me about Pat Bamford. If he goes down to Cardiff and wins the game, you know, and if he starts, you know, playing exceptionally well week in, week out and leads up better with him on the pitch, we can have a conversation, but that's yet to be seen. <coughs> um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, Class and Connor looks comfortable. Yeah, he looks all right. I mean, the I mean, there was, there was, he didn't, once again, um, Rad, I, I'm not. I'm not being negative here. I just want everybody to contextualise who we've who we've played in the last two. We had to get the job done. He's got clean sheets. Firpo's got a clean sheet in a back line. Um, but let's just calma, calma, calma. Let's play some proper teams in this division, um, our division, and um, let's see where we're at. Let's not just get too carried away. Is what I will say. Not get too carried away. Two really important wins there. We've won in the FA Cup. We've scored six goals, two 3 0 victories, um, two dominant performances, I would say. But let's look at a run of maybe five to 10 games in the Championship where we're playing some real killers in that division. Away games as well in the Championship where we just can't seem to get any momentum going. And, and, and dominant games and varying ways of playing and seeing some players come in and players go out and just consistency and momentum with the squad, then I'll make a judgment. I'll make a judgment. And that, that goes to collective as a general. When we're looking at Klaassen, um, I, I personally think we've got three average goalkeepers. That's what I personally think. Um, you guys might disagree, but on the whole, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Two clean sheets for him, which is good. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, but we're going to leave it there, everyone. If you want some bonus stuff, we're going to be heading on over to the Patreon to give you your player ratings ASAP. Um, thank you so much for your um, continued support. Later on tonight, we may do a rumor mill, all right? So if you see a scheduled video, later on tonight, we may do a rumor of some bonus content. Um, but make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to One Leeds Fan Channel. We're about 50 away from 30K. Please make sure you do so if you're not already subscribed. I bet there's a few of you who aren't. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Leeds win the game. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.